let's go ahead and look at this rumor surrounding AMD versus Nvidia on power efficiency. The article is coming from your favorite rumor tech news source, WCCF Tech. And it says in the title, AMD's AMCM based RDNA 3 RX 7000 GPUs will be more power efficient than NVIDIA RTX 4000 GPUs and could even offer higher performance. An analysis by Moore's Law is Dead via Hardware Times suggests that AMD's next generation RTX 7000 series, which have been confirmed to be based on the MCM approach, could outperform NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series GPUs. It goes without saying that this is a huge rumor and should be taken with buckets of salt till further verification is received. That said, this is in, uh, in uh, basically he's inferring by Moore's Law is Dead based on information provided by his sources and corroborated by at least one independent leak given below. And if those are considered to be credible enough, then this uh, inference could very well, inference, could very well turn out to be true as well. A quick recap of our uh, for our readers before we dig into this, a leak, leaked LinkedIn description of an AMD principal member of technical staff more or less confirmed that the upcoming RX 7000 series is based on RDNA 3 and has at least one SKU with two different processes involved, TSMC 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer. The only reason this would be the case is, of course, if AMD was going with an MCM approach as far as its GPUs go. Here's the post on the AMD deal. Principal member of technical staff, Infinity Data Fabric Silicon Design Team, says collaborate with multiple teams to develop a custom fabric topology for each SOC, work with the SOC floor planning team to place the fabric components in the floor plan, partner with the RTL team to address timing paths in the microarchitecture, and optimize for power and AR. Drive Synopsis Fusion Compiler to provide optimal timing for each of the synthesized components and consult with the physical design team to help enable physical closure of the design. The project is Vega 10, Vega 11, Vega 12, Navi 10, Navi 12, Navi 14, Navi 21, Navi 22. It keeps going on. And then Navi 32 here, I think, and Navi 31 in Navi 33, you can see the 5 nanometer, 6 nanometer, 5 nanometer, 6 nanometer, and then that 6 nanometer. So this is uh, essentially what they're talking about right here is this This is kind of the leak basically through a job posting. This is also close to where I'm from over here at Austin, Texas. So that's pretty cool. AMD has already turned the tides in the CPU market thanks to its MCM-based Ryzen processors, and it looks like it wants to repeat that trick on the GPU side as well. While this is where the confirmed news ends, another rumor by Twitter user Olark suggests that the RDNA 3 GPUs could have as many as 15,360 cores, which would be quite the step up from the 5,120 cores of the RX 6900. We are pretty early in the leak cycle for the next generation GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia, but based on the data we have, MLID's statement does not seem to be that far-fetched. It hinges on the fact that AMD is working on an MCM approach to GPUs, which that's gonna be the multi-chip modules, kind of like, because I, I, I just realized they haven't defined that. That's basically along the lines of what they're doing with the Ryzen CPUs with the chiplets, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if this part truly comes to pass, that LinkedIn description could have been a planned roadmap. As we know, roadmaps change all the time. And AMD goes with an MCM approach. It should very easily be able to eat NVIDIA's lunch in terms of power efficiency. Whether it can beat NVIDIA in terms of absolute power performance is another matter altogether. And that's going to be pretty difficult because we've been talking about this on the channel quite a bit, but that move to the PCI Gen 5 for NVIDIA and the rumored power consumption that we're going to be seeing from the RTX 4000 series is absolutely insane, up to 600 watts for the top end model for a single GPU. But when we compare that to previous generation cycles between AMD 
ATI, if we because we kind of got to go back to ATI and NVIDIA, what we usually see is when the G, any GPU company starts pushing for a total amount of power consumption on a single GPU is usually when they're running towards the end of that roadmap and they're getting worse and worse. And on the flip side, the company that is starting to get more and more power efficient typically means that they're on the rise up. So either way, even with 6,000 versus 3,000 series, it definitely looks like this is the path that's being taken. And I'm pretty sure at some point, AMD is going to surpass NVIDIA for not only total power, but also power consumption, just based on obviously what happened with the 6,000, 3,000 series, what we know about 4,000 series coming out, and now these leaks surrounding the RX 6, or 7,000 series from AMD. <clears throat> Ever since Lisa took over, AMD has focused more on carving out a niche for itself in the GPU side of things. That is focused on the mainstream segment, seg yeah, segment rather than the high-end gaming segment. But all this could change with RDNA 3, with some key limitations of the RDNA 2 architecture gone, a node shrink, and the MCM design philosophy finally unleashed with the GPUs. It could be the first check from AMD to NVIDIA. So as you can see here, they got the 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 series kind of laid out here. 5 nanometer, 6 nanometer, question mark. Of course, multi-chip module design here, probably coming in. And then the uh, presumed high-end GPU, SPs, mid-tier, and of course the entry tier. So up to 10,240 versus, you know, on the 6,000 series, 2,560. So quite a big leap there. Oh, at the very top flagship, 15,360, uh, which is pretty much three, yeah, three times that 5120 on the 6900. I think obviously I kind of already did the expo exposition here. So at the end of the day, summing this up, do I think that this holds weight? Uh, I Yes, I do think this holds weight, especially after seeing the, the comparison between the 6000 series and the 3000 series. And if it really does go multi-chip module, I think that AMD blows NVIDIA out of the water as far as power consumption and power efficiency uh, is concerned. And then we'll have to see what happens at the top end. Now, the more power efficient you get, the more you can throw on to a single PCB in theory, which means you can increase, of course, the total overall performance as well, theoretically, without having to utilize as much power, meaning that you don't have as much heat generation, which means you can fit more onto the board and basically generate more performance. So maybe it's one more generation, like the RX 7000 series and the RTX 4000 series. We start to see the improvements from AMD and then boom on the RX 8000 series or whatever it'll be called. I think once we get into 8000 series, it's going to be extra confusing because of previous launches like the 8800 GTS and so on. But I think like RX 8000 series, we're going to see huge uh, swing in AMD's favor. Obviously, some of the big things that people will point out would be the proprietary technologies that NVIDIA has including, of course, things like DLSS, but AMD recently had their own super resolution upgrade that apparently is performing very well already on the 6000 series GPUs. And then they are behind on ray tracing as well. But with ray tracing being added in on the AMD side for the consoles, it really may not matter that much as devs get used to basically uh, utilizing AMD's drivers, etc., And so we'll have to kind of see where it goes uh, from that perspective as well. The other thing to note about that is we had that huge NVIDIA hack with all of those leaks coming out, all of those files that do cover like the DLSS technology, right? So not that that's necessarily great for NVIDIA, obviously, because they you don't want that basically ending up open source when it's kind of your biggest lead over the competition right now. But the fact is, is that that's kind of cats getting out of the bag as far as NVIDIA proprietary technologies. 
And as other GPU competitors get a hold of that, it'll be harder and harder for NVIDIA to basically hold its lead on that perspective. So I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.